Good morning, my name is Larry Grisano and this is The Art of Taping Drywall. We're back for the finished coat of the butt joints, taper joints, screws, and in the second clip will be inside corners or angles and a little shot on the corner bead that's here in the room. Now I spoke to you in the second clip about these little draw lines that we make and the camera's not going to pick that up too well for us, so I'll just show you what I do with them. I don't sand between coats, but these little draw lines are high spots. Take the four inch knife and I scrape it away, and that's it for the sanding on that one. There's one on this side, I just feel for it, and it's cleaned up. Same with the taper joint with the two met, there's draw lines in here. So, all these are, are high spots, and I just took the high spots away. Might as well prepare this butt joint too. There goes that draw line. You can push on the knife to do it. I just find that holding it this way. It up does the trick best for me. Now there's no high spots there now, so what we're going to do is we're going to pick up the trowel and we're going to cook two butt joints right now and show you how that's done. Now you don't use the big trowel for this job. A small trowel does the trick for all the finished coat on the joints. You don't need the big trowel anymore. That was used for the butt joints on the second look. So here's my remote control techniques again. Moving them on. And we'll start with this little short one here. So upside and down the hop goes. Load it up, and I'm going to go an inch or two wider again. From the middle of the joint, load it up. I'm laying it down as I'm going up. And then just make sure it's all covered. Now on this coat, you're not leaving mud there, so you will tilt your trowel up. So we'll start with the edge, and put pressure right at the tip of the trowel. It's tilted up pretty high, and feathers it off against the board on that side. The back, I put pressure on it, and feathered off that side. So many edges have disappeared now. Now we'll tilt up hard for the center, and that skins out all imperfection, any lines, any bubbles, any waving in the mud work itself. Come back and do that one. Come back and tilt up and do that one. That's actually perfectly smooth to a point that sanding is just a matter of wiping, not scrubbing your guts out and making a lot of dust. So we'll quickly grab this one here too. And I'll grab the screws that are right beside it at the same time. So near a plug, I'll just go up so that we're not filling that plug box full, and I'll go down. That loads up those screws beside that butt joint. Now we do the butt joint itself and fill it up like we did that first one. Then over to the center, and same deal. Now I wanted to take it halfway into the joint at the top. Now, on the edge where there's a screw, I'm tilted up really, really, and really high and tilted up nice and strong and pushing really hard for this coat. Now the next one, skim. Hence the drywall, and that portal's mud to go to this end of the butt joint and load it up. You now there's little bald spots in here, I want them all loaded up nicely. Now we'll go to this and push at the back of the trowel to feather it off and tilt the whole thing up. Back to the center, borrow mud, bring it down a little bit. I've got my trowel tilted right up. Now I'm examining this and I've got one little scratch over here. I just made it disappear because that trowel is tilted up. Now that took out the bubbles and the scratches and all imperfection in that button. Now before we do the factory joint, these need a time to set. So something else I do as part of this step is I, I, me being right handed, I work myself from left to right to do screws. So I'll load up enough mud for the screws. So they are nice and thick. I start back here because sometimes mud sticks to the back of the trowel and just leaves a little bit of mud on there. So I start back here and I do my wipe. If I'm not satisfied with it, I do it again. And I'm pushing hard to skim it right down. Next to nothing for sanding that. So the next one I'll do the same. Load up my mud. If I'm going to leave a chunk of mud on from the back of my trowel, I'd rather leave it over here. Tilt it right up. We have two here, so they're loading, skim, push hard, tilt the towel up and skim it off. You'll see you'll have next to nothing for finished coat. Now here's the difference you see here on the bottom screws. Uses only one stroke that way. One side of my trowel, which is for my back hand, it's load the mud up, let the trowel turn, take the mud off. Those screws are coated. So let's quickly do it to these ones here too. So we'll load the mud up, let the towel go, tilt it off. 
didn't have to wipe my towel in between because I was using the two different edges for the same job. So let's do it over here too. Load it up nice and thick. I need one wipe for the, this other set that's really close to them. And let's tilt that towel up. Mud's gone. It's tapering off. That's the second coat for the screws. Next to nothing for sanding. We we'll still sand it, but there's next to nothing there. So, I'm going to come over here and I want to get these screws too. So, left to right for me. I'll start here and load the mud up nice and thick. And then I have to move at the speed of a professional drywall paper so that I have a chance to show you these instructions. So, on and on. Last one, on. Turn that towel off and get it off of there. Now, my mud's starting to get a little dry. So what you can do is go back to your pail and unload it and grab some fresh stuff. Because on this coat you want your mud runny and the type of mud we've got today, it is nice and runny. So it works good on this uh, particular coat. Now I'm going to take the ladder out of the way for a minute. And up, down. Leave your mud there, take it away. Don't leave any chunks, any remnants on the wall at all. And it makes your life a lot easier when it comes to the sand. So, we did two directions just so that we didn't fill the box full of mud. And it's, there's no fun doing that. You have to pick it up later. <laughs> Alright. Now we also have this mud joint at the top. Now the other day it bumped me enough that I left that line in there because I was a little premature to coat the angle before uh, doing the butt, uh, before letting the butt joint set. So I went and gave it a little touch up on that little line. We do have to hit that butt joint, and once I do that, then I'll run around the place and get them all and give them a chance to set up just a little bit. So we'll load the mud on this butt joint, just like we did down there on the wall. Take myself to at least in the middle of the tapered joint that follows on the ceiling there, and take myself right close to the corner, within four inches of the corner. Because then when I do my angle in the corner, it connects to the mud from this. So tilt and borrow mud, bring it back. Here, tilt, borrow mud, load it up. So it's loaded up nice and thick, laid the trowel down to load it up like we did on the set and toe. I would just press it on the back of the trowel there. I'll press on the tip of the trowel. That does my feathering off. Now I'll come back and I'll tilt it right up and push hard. And here, Tilt it right up and push hard. Now all we have is the center. Tilt it right up and push hard. There's no lines and no mud left on that joint at all. So, there you go. You've got the mud joints, you've got the screws. Now, let's go a little step further. Factory tapered joints. You don't want to get your four inch knife out to scrape for it or sand or whatever you want to call it. I just take my trowel off and put it on the side like this. takes away those draw lines that I put in the second coat. So, again, the one we want to do first is this one because I'm not just going to hit the wall over here. So I'll just quickly load it. And I'm going two inches wider again, but I'm laying that trowel down to leave the mud there. So that's what we want to do here. Now, I'm not right into the corner, so it's tilt up and borrow some mud, take it back to the corner. Tilt up, borrow some mud, take it back to the corner. Now we'll skim, pressing at the tip of the trowel, against the board. We'll do and press on the back side of the trowel against the board at the bottom. Now we tilt right up from center to one side. Tilt right up from center to one side. I see a scratch so I'll go one more time. That's a finished coat and it's fairly smooth to the point that sanding is just a matter of wiping with your pool sander, not scrubbing your guts out and making a lot of dust. Um, we might as well do a little shot on this one here too. So, I'll load it up thick. We just won't cross these butt joints yet like we did last time. We just can't do that yet. I'll make sure we let you set up before we, we do the angles. So, I just pushed against the bottom. I just pushed against the board at the top. From here to the center, tilt up, push hard. Tilt up, push hard. You're not leaving a thickness for the finished coat. 
We already did that on the second. The job of the finished coat is to take out those little bubbles and lines. So you're seeing the angles, or you're seeing the butt joints, the paper joints, and the screws. And that is the finished coat for those. Sanding after this is very, very minimal. Still needs to be done in order to blend board with mud. But don't leave extra mud on there for nothing just to sand your guts out. Nobody likes sanding. Uh, the second part of today's segment, we're going to do those inside angles and that uh, bullmost corner bead in the closet just for a little lesson there. See you in the next one.